The expectation is just you're going to be able to do more. You're going to be able to do a lot, a lot more. So I, I don't know, like, um, I just feel, you know, everyone's going to have to start thinking bigger about what they're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're a data analyst, you're going to have to start thinking much bigger about well, you, about what you're doing. I mean, you, you're going to have to start build, be building apps to, you know, build build applications, build AI applications that get a lot more data that you then have to manage. You know, there's going to be more data to manage in that case. Like everything's going to be bigger, 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 bigger. And so you're going to have to start thinking like that, I think, and start and start and start working towards that. I mean, we know for a fact that there's there's always 10, there's always like multiple times more you could be analyzing that you could be um, right. managing right. from a data perspective. Um, and I, I would say it's the same from a, any technological perspective in an organization, you know, every time, I mean, it's been a while now, but every time I was in an organization, there was always like so many things that you could do from a technical point of view or an IT point of view that you could never get to because you never had the resources, right? So, so much more of that is now achievable and so many more people can be involved in actually making that a reality. Everyone's going to have to think bigger, go bigger, be bigger um, because you can that's that, that's that's what I think. I mean, it's it's really interesting in the sense that you know we've talked about kind of how everybody has become a manager, you know, and that yeah. you're managing this team of AIs. But it, in a sense, what it had always been before was you've got this group of models, and you would work with this model, and then you take it back, and then you'd work with this model, you know, for this task. And now it's like it was it was really metaphorical in the sense that they weren't different entities. They were just different versions of the same box you were talking to. And yep. now it's literally a bunch of boxes um, yeah. that can then go out in the world themselves. And so it really, I think it really becomes a lot like in a sense, almost like a, like a conference call where you're, you're on with a bunch of team members, you know, scattered remotely you know around the the world or the country and you're talking to everybody at the same time yeah 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 i mean it is and and look i think as an individual you're only restricted like there's going to come a time at the like at the moment it's only sort of for me it's only this coding um aspect right but there's going to be a time where the only restriction is how much stuff you can think of doing like it's right. not actually going to be physically you actually sitting there typing or do, it's just going to be you thinking and talking and then the AI agents are going to go off and do it. I mean, that's kind of like what I'm doing right now. Like that is what I'm doing from an app development perspective, what I've been doing for the last 10 days um, since I sort of started doing this. And so, you know, I think that's what what what, what it's going to come to. It's just, just you, you're going to be just thinking you need this, thinking and then saying it. And then you're gonna, and this is what we, this is what you need to build for. Like, if you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna create something valuable, this is where you need to slot in. You need, you need to actually build this. Like, that's what I'm. I mean, that's just what I'm all like it, day and night. That's all I'm thinking about right now. Is that how can you, how can you build something that fits into what people are going to be using, that enables that to happen, enables that to actually, actually happen. It's not. It's certainly not easy. I don't even know how to build some of this stuff, but. That's what you got to become. Like I, I just don't think you've got a choice. I don't think you've got a choice. Like even if these amazing tools that we've been using, if even if um, ChatGPT, ChatGPT, unless they go agentic, unless you go agentic and you have these AI agents um, running lots of things, I think you're gonna you're gonna be um, toast. You're not gonna you're not gonna survive in the next year or two because that's what's coming. That's what everyone's gonna be building towards, right? Yeah. And it's the I mean, same. It becomes interesting to see if you get you get kind of the equivalent of AI middle managers that you know you you have at some point more agents than you can you can deal with. And so, yeah. do you have do you have AIs that are trained basically to manage agents? Yeah, you know, I um, yeah, you know the other insight I had it was a it was a it was um, bringing some of my of our historic thoughts about Copilot. And I was listening to um, I was listening to a Bloomberg interview on YouTube uh, with the um, Salesforce CEO um, Mark Benioff. Mm -hmm. So what he's done, he he's a master salesperson, by the way, and and I think most of what he talks about is just 
what it, most of what he says is just complete BS. I don't, I don't think it's actually reality. But anyway, everyone's trying to stake their client. They're all trying to position themselves in this AI wave, right? They're, they're trying to say where they are at. And then as soon as they catch up, they will, um, they, they can say that they were the first there or they were always there. So his, right. his strategy, right, with Salesforce, he believes in agent force. He believes in creating digital workers, right? And that's how he's positioning a sales force, digital workers. Whilst Microsoft is positioning co-pilot. And if you think about those two things, those two concepts, they're actually very different. They're very, mm. very different. He's saying his future is just spin up AI to agents, right? The spin up, spin up AI agents, digital workers, uh, and multiply yourself 10 times. Microsoft have come up with a strategy that they they think everything's in combination with the human and it's 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 kind of interesting like i i actually think that in the future copilot is going to be seen as silly potentially because that's that is just an overlay on a tool which isn't agentic it's just it's just you know that their historic tools are actually holding them back from becoming full on you know how to here's how you spin up five AI, ai agents to go and do this you know and look they don't have a choice they, they i guess they have to do that based on based on what they've historically you know their historical business but i think copilot's not going to be the strategy that works here i i actually don't unless unless they're somehow going to build this agentic thing in behind it now i i i, I don't know i don't i don't think it's going to i don't think it's going to succeed I don't know. We're like, they're so big and powerful. And maybe, maybe, maybe it will, but I, I don't know. Just, just in recent weeks after, and sort of hearing these anecdotes and stuff, I think the positioning of copilot is not actually the future. It is actually more this digital worker type thing um, is, is sort of more the, the, the play is, is going to be the winner. It's going to be the winning concept at the end of the day. I mean, it's it's interesting because I I kind of came at it from a little bit different standpoint this week, which I, you know I had kind of the the um you know the Power BI is is dead man walking post and yeah you know my 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 thinking in that was that we've been in this in this ten year period where the whole focus has been making things low code no code yeah and that was because humans were better at clicking on stuff than coding stuff. Yeah. And you know the the average human and now it's completely reversed that AI is so good at coding and really bad at clicking on stuff. And mm. so the stuff that's built around low code no code is kind of it's just not what you need now. And it's you know yeah. it it's it's a horse in a Ferrari world and um you know that it's it's really interesting because I was talking to a guy named Auntie Rask who um does a lot of stuff with um, ggplot2. He's writing a book on the extensions, and ggplot2 is is now hitting its is is turning eighteen. And normally, when software is eighteen years old, you kind of look at it as probably on on its last legs, or or else just a freak like Excel, you know, that just is going to live forever. Um, mm -hmm. But I was talking to him about the fact that in some weird way, this eighteen year old software is kind of coming into its own. I think is going to you. Know, generate a lot of a lot of activity and a lot of interest because it's all code and the things you can do anything with it from a visualization standpoint and mm. ai is great at writing it and so all of a sudden you've got this you know this thing that was kind of viewed as too difficult and not really in sync with you know with power bi and tableau and these other things that were much more interactive and all of a sudden now it's like it's like it's like sitting on prime real estate and you know, it's kind of like, you know, it's not the same thing as the agent argument, but it's this idea that I think the kind of the, the landscape has really shifted and what was, what was kind of front running is now, you know, I think way behind. Yeah. Um, nice post, by the way, nice post. Um, and, um, Good on you for having the guts to to say that on on LinkedIn as well. <laughs> um, not, not not easy as I as I discovered earlier earlier this year when I went off on Fabric. Um, but 
look, I mean, you're exactly right from what I'm saying. You're exactly right from what I'm saying. You know, uh, unless you can turn your software agentic, you're gonna, you, you, there's, you, you've got you've got no chance of surviving long term over the next over the next couple of years, um, because the other way is just so superior. It's so superior. It's unbelievable. Um, look, it's in it. Look, it's so new. It's so new. It doesn't exist in every vertical vertical at the market at the moment. But um, when you start spinning up these agents and And I'm sure this is the direction that uh, these AI, like Claude and ChatGPT will try to go, right? Like you'll be able to connect MC, your MC, your database via MCP. You'll be able to ask a question. Then you'll then be able to go ask the next question. Then you'll be able to go ask the next question. I mean, ChatGPT already has this with Codex, by the way. Um, right. So, um, but it's going to be And more Google like that. just released their CLI. Um, yep. Did you see That's that? right. Yep. Yep. I did. Yep. And um, so... Look, unless you can go this way, I, I, I just the the only the only um the only issue I have with it is where's the value? Okay, so yes, ggg ggg plot is going to become more um popular, but it's isn't it? It's open source, so like how how are they going to charge for it? How are they going to charge an AI agent to go in and just code it up when the AI AIs probably even know the code already? So you know, like, so I agree with you, I agree with you, but how are these guys going to make any money? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. At the moment, I mean, there's this potential of microtransactions and things like that, and maybe that's a huge market. I, I, I don't know. Maybe instead of paying a Power BI subscription, um, maybe businesses might be paying cents every time the AI agent goes and queries some system that brings back really fancy visualizations or something. Ah, uh, so it's that's an unknown to me. I, I don't know. I don't know, but. It's probably directionally correct. Like it's probably um, where 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 it might be going. Um, so I don't know. Do, you know, I mean, I, I think that's right. I mean, you know, if you look at if you look at kind of after I did that post, you know, I I got a ton of responses from either companies or people who'd been already using different products that are kind of trying to stake out that claim in the in the analytics visual space. Yeah. And, you know, there were a bunch of them I hadn't even heard of that I'm kind of in the process of investigating. But, you know, it's it's exactly right that, you know, I think the the microtransaction and it's really funny because I just right before this um, right before this call, I um, I was on basically buying, you know, 2000 tokens of a new um, of a new um, speech to, to um, speech to text API. You know, right. that, that does some new things in terms of um, diarization, and um, you know, identifying speakers automatically. And yeah. um, you know, I just bought, as I say, I bought you know a few dollars worth of you know two thousand tokens for like six bucks. And yeah, um, you know, I, I think I think that is going to become really really common. 